Hello everybody, and in this video we're going to be discussing today Chebyshev's theorem, named after a, a Russian mathematician, Chebyshev was his last name. I, I don't really recall his first name off the top of my head. Actually, uh, I know I did pull a picture of the guy though. So let's see, Chebyshev, ah, here he is right here, this, this gentleman. But uh, anyways, we're going to be discussing his theorem today that actually uh, deals with a pretty important principle in probability statistics, but uh, before we talk about it, let's just recall that, that a lot of the time in probability in, in statistics, when we deal with um, continuous variables, we're often looking at things that are either normally distributed, not normally distributed, whatever, but uh, distributions, uh, so a frequency distribution, but what we're interested in is given, say, an average, if we call this, say, like the average right here, mu, and some standard deviation, if we knew the number of standard deviations away from the mean, we can necessarily imply what the, what the uh, proportion of the population that falls within a certain number of standard deviations to the left or to the right is. So given a certain number of standard deviations to the left or the right of the mean, given and also its distribution, we could find approximately the percentage of the population that, that falls within that range. And that's something we're, we're always interested in doing and uh, as a matter of fact, if we're doing this with a normal distribution, which is this one here, is approximately normal, I would say, uh, it's really convenient because what that allows us to do is go and use the standard normal deviation and some z-scores, which necessarily tell us the number of standard deviations away from the mean, and, and tables of calculated uh, values that are, that are calculated prior uh, to doing this. Actually, there are a lot of tables available on the internet or in the back of textbooks, but we could use those tables to calculate this, but, but the question of the day is this, um, and that is, what if we end up with a distribution that is not, not even approximately normal, but we have something that uh, necessarily maybe starts off really short here and then necessarily climbs drastically and then and say maybe the balance of power is here and then, and then it tails off to the right here. We would say this is, this is a right skewed set of data where maybe the average falls within right here and of course, there's a certain number of standard deviations, but but still, we might be interested in saying, okay, so so how much of the data falls within a certain range, a certain range of the average, how, you know, within a certain number of standard deviations from the average, and and when we don't have something that that is approximately normal or or, or perfectly normal, uh, then then using this idea of finding the percentage under the curve by using our our tables of, of values is kind of shot. So what we need to do is actually develop another way to look at this and. And, and that way to look at it is through Chebyshev's theorem, and, and which basically states that uh, the proportion of values, uh, and we could call that P, the proportion of values from a data set, and I hate to use capital P, I don't want you to confuse this with the probability function, but the proportion of values from a data set that fall within, we'll call K standard deviations of the mean. So, so K in this instance is going to be a lot like Z in, in the sense that uh, it stands for number of standard deviations away from the mean, but okay. The proportion of values from a, from a data set that fall within k standard deviations of the mean will be at least, okay, so at least, that's, that's greater than or equal to this right here. We say 1 minus 1 over k squared, where recall that k, k represents a number of standard deviations from the mean. So we have number of standard deviations away from the mean. And, uh, and so this is really kind of a convenient way to, to accomplish what we couldn't do previously with the standard normal uh, distribution because maybe we have a distribution that's not necessarily approximately normal. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to kind of uh, explore this real quickly and just kind of look at the pattern that develops here. There is, there is a slight pattern, but we say, okay, so let's make a, a table of values for K. And, and I think it's important that I point out um, at this point, something I didn't mention, that, that K is necessarily greater than one and the reason why we, we kind of put the stipulation on there is that if we were to substitute one standard deviation away from the mean in for k right here we'd have one minus one over one squared which is necessarily uh, one minus one and that's zero and we want to avoid that so uh, but we say how about we start with two standard deviations away from the mean okay so what we're necessarily discussing is say we have some data set like this one right here and we say okay so the mean is right here and we say, okay, so this is one standard deviation to the left and two standard deviations to the left maybe goes out this far and one standard deviation to the right and two standard deviations to the right, but we want to necessarily find the proportion of this data set that falls within that, that range right there. Oh, horrible. But within that range, and so what we'll do is we'll plug this in for k, which does represent the number of standard deviations away from the mean, and we end up with this expression right here, one minus one over 
2 squared, which is, a, of course, 1 minus a quarter. 1 minus a quarter is 0.75. Okay, so what this necessarily implies is that within two standard deviations each way of the mean, given any distribution, okay, that, that could be normally distributed or not normally distributed, it does not matter, but 75% of the data must always lie within two standard deviations of the mean regardless of the distribution. So again, that's the convenience of using Chebyshev's theorem is that we can use this with things that are not necessarily normally distributed. Okay. So uh, I actually would like to, to look at a few more of these. What if we did this? We say k is three standard deviations. We'd have one minus one over three squared, which is nine. We end up with eight ninths. Eight ninths is a decimal. We get uh, 0 0.888 repeating. So we're gonna call this uh, 0 0.8889, about four decimal places. But what this means is that within three standard deviations of the mean, if we come up here to this last example, within three standard deviations, we can fully expect that about 88.89% of the, of the, or proportion of the data values fall within three standard deviations of the mean. And uh, why not? We'll go one more. Four, one minus one over four squared, which would be 16, produces 15 sixteenths here. 15 sixteenths, of course, or maybe not of course, but uh, 15 sixteenths in terms of proportion of the data there, we've got uh, 0 0.9375, so 0 0.9375, and that's, you know, we can check that on a calculator. But again, this means within three, or excuse me, four standard deviations each way of the mean, we should have 93.75% uh, of the total amount of data given any distribution, okay? So now that we've kind of looked at uh, what, what this necessarily tells us is just saying at least 75% of the data here, or at least 88.89% of the data, or at least about 94% of the data is within four standard deviations of the mean, regardless of the distribution. What we can now do is use this to our advantage to, to kind of work through some problems. So let's start with this one here. Um, you know, I'm going to kind of read it here, but we'll write down the given information. But let's say we had uh, a survey of local companies that found that the the mean or the average amount of travel allowance for their executives was 25 cents per mile. So we've got, uh, we've got a mu value of 25 cents per mile is our average, okay? And, and what we'll say is then the standard deviation is necessarily 2 cents uh, per mile on average. So 2 cents per mile on average, okay? So here's what we want to do. We want to use Chebyshev's theorem, but uh, in order to to find the minimum percentage of data values that will fall between 20 cents and 30 cents. So the first thing I want to do here is, is necessarily this. Let's illustrate this where we're going to put our, our average right here. We said this was 25 cents. And, and underneath this, I think it'd be convenient to write the number of standard deviations away from the mean. And previously, we called this a z-score. But z implied that things were standard normal. And in this instance, we cannot actually say that this is a normal distribution we don't have the data to confirm that. So, so what we have to do is relegate ourselves to using Chebyshev's theorem. But, but this is a k value, but it still represents the number of standard deviations away from the mean. So zero standard deviations away from the mean. If we go, say, one to the right, this would be plus two cents, so 27 cents. Two standard deviations uh, would necessarily be 29 cents, okay? Uh, two standard deviations to the right. And then three standard deviations to the right, we'd have about 31 cents. And I know I'm writing sloppy here, but how about to the left now? So if we say, okay, so this would be 23 cents here, and this would be uh, 21 cents here, and this would be 19 cents here, okay? And, and uh, sorry about the spacing here. I am trying to fit everything in. But bottom line is this. We want to find the proportion of data values that fall between 20 cents and, and 30 cents. So somewhere between 20 cents and, uh, and 30 cents. We want to find out what proportion of the population is, is between these two uh, data values here. We'll call it x1, x2. Uh, but the matter of fact is this. We'd say, okay, so 20 cents is necessarily right in here somewhere. So we say 20 cents would be about right here. And uh, 30 cents would be over here. But really, really, again, what we're trying to consider here is, is using Chebyshev's theorem, we would want to know... Uh, the percentage or the proportion of data values that fall within a certain amount of standard deviations from the mean. And in this instance, we're talking this is five cents less and five cents more than our mean. But what we want to do is we want to convert these values to k values, okay? Uh, we need to know k before we can evaluate for the proportion of data values that fall within k standard deviations from the mean. So here's what we'll do. We'll pick uh, necessarily say 30 cents here and we'll calculate the k value. Now, 
since this is a k value is finding number of standard deviations away from the mean, the nice thing about that is we could necessarily borrow from our formula for when we calculated z values, which was necessarily the same thing, which was z equals x minus mu, or the individual datum minus the, the mean, all over the standard deviation. And in this instance, we know all our, our, our goods here to calculate this, but we're going to call it k. And so k, k is the x value here in question is 30 cents, so we say 30 cents minus the mean, which is 25 cents. And this is all over a standard deviation of two cents. Now, simplifying this, we get, uh, we get uh, a nickel, a nickel over two pennies, which, which basically here comes out to be five halves or 2.5. But what this implies is, we're discussing what proportion of the population or the data lies within 2.5 standard deviations of this each way. So now what we can do is, using Chebyshev's theorem, we could say, okay, well, it's at least, or greater than or equal to, 1 minus 1 over number of standard deviations from the mean squared. In this case, we're, con we're considering 2.5 standard deviations. So now simplifying this, we get 1 minus 1 over uh, 2.5 squared is 6.25. And, uh, and necessarily, we could, we could simplify this out on a calculator here, if, if I can get this fired up. But we say, okay, so... If we take 1 minus 1 divided by 6.25, and uh, I apologize for doing my calculations uh, by hand and you can't see them, but it comes out to be 0.84, okay, which now is what we were looking for, which necessarily implies that um, if we were looking for the proportion of data values that fell between 20 and 30 cents, that would necessarily, again, have been within 2.5 standard deviations each way of this of this mean here of 25 cents, which means uh, plugging that into to, to Chebyshev's theorem here, we've got about 84% or at least 84% of the data must lie within 20 to 30 cents from the mean. So this is just a real quick example on how to use Chebyshev's theorem and, and hopefully that helps you out.